Welcome to game number six. We are playing Magic Online this time, because here we can play theories in the proper format in Pioneer. Mm, this hand is absolutely fine if we draw blue land within the next two or three turns. We are playing 13 blue lands. We should be able to find something here. Especially the Fairy Dream Thief is going to be helpful. So we are giving up one damage here for not playing the Dream Thief in turn one. But this way we can curve out with turn two uh, Free the Fae. Or Pity Theft, of course. Yeah, we get rid of Thalia's Lieutenant here, uh, because we can see her as a pump spell or as a single big creature. Either way, we would have to get rid of her in the late game. Also, it wouldn't feel great to bounce her with Pity Theft. Copper Code Vanguard. Um, so far, this is only a 2 2. And we do have a Fairy Dream Thief to back up the Fairy Fencing. So we are not going to take the Spell Stutter. It's also one mana cheaper. That means we could theoretically play something like Picklock Prankster into Fairy Fencing. But I prefer to get the Surveil from the Fairy Dream Thief. And Sleep Cursed Fairy is good in this matchup, especially with her untap ability. And let's return the Copper Code Vanguard back to its owner's hand here. Brutal Qatar takes the Dream Thief here. Yeah, here is a decision to make. Either to play the Sleep Crust Fairy and have her untap uh, earlier, or to cast the Picklock Prankster to back up the Fairy Fencing. Picklock Prankster would have been the more mana efficient way. But I see more value in dealing 3 damage instead of 1. Another idea would be to still cast the Picklock Prankster, but not the Fairy Fencing. Maybe the Brutal Qatar wouldn't have been a problem for another turn. We find Rinka here. No reason for me not to discard the Eco Drain here. Uh, 
and it was wrong not to use Wrinkle Sacrifice ability. I should have just sacrificed the Fairy Dream Thief. And next turn, uh, play the Pig Look Prankster to keep up the pressure. And with the opponent playing two creatures at the same turn, I'm starting to lose the control over the board state here. So we got rid of Kithion here. And it's nice to counter another Copper Code Vanguard here. Yeah, we can just block the Vanguard here. And let's get rid of the other lootment. And the opponent scoops. So against humans, Glistening Deluge is really good. Also Ritual of Soot can get rid of a lot of problems at once. And I can also see Kalitas here. I could also see myself boarding Noxious Grasp here, but um, the hard part is to figure out what we can take out. I think it's best to board out the discard spells, because uh, humans can empty their hand really fast. And I find myself again boarding out Brassenborough because I want to thin out the mana curve a little bit. Also I think one fairy dream thief can go out and Liliana of the way can go in for that. So here I put Liliana of the Veil out again to make room for the Noxious Grasp. 
instead of cutting the thought seas or the ego drain. Yeah, we do want Noxious Grasp in this matchup. This is just again highlighting the problem of me not using a sideboard guide. I'm currently writing on one. But because we don't have a printer, I'm currently writing it by hand, and that takes a little bit of time. It's mostly just about transmitting it from my laptop onto paper. But I have made a few changes on the sideboard in the last few days, so I will have to make a few changes. Um, turn 1 Fairy Dream Thief is the obvious play here. And this is where I'm realizing for the first time that Fairy Dream Thief is really good in this matchup. And I'm going to play the island here because Prosperor needs two blue mana. Pity Theft would be the more mana efficient play here, but I'm going to play Eco Drain in case the opponent has a wedding announcement and they don't have one. And because of the buff abilities, I'm taking the Copper Coat Vanguard here. and the opponent empties the head onto the board. That's great to get rid of the Dauntless Bodyguard with the Fairy Dream Thief here. And that's a little bit too much land for my taste. The Dauntless Bodyguard only gives Indestructible, so we are still able to Pity Theft the Copper Code Vanguard. And we still take 6 here. And we draw a Fatal Bush. So, while this would be something against the other Copper Code Vanguard, the Dauntless Bodyguard is really irritating me, because on the Dauntless Bodyguard there is still standing the Copper Code Vanguard, and I figure that means that he can still sacrifice it to give him Indestructible. And I don't know why the opponent is going directly into attack declare.
And now the Copter Port Vanguard entered the battlefield in the second main phase. We are still trying to hit the Copper Code Vanguard with the Fatal Push here. That I could kill the Copper Code Vanguard indicates that they don't have the ability to still sacrifice the Dauntless Bodyguard for the Indestructible. And I have looked into the rules and the Dauntless Bodyguard does not protect the Copper Code Vanguard at this point anymore because he left the battlefield and with that he failed to do his job. And now he sees the Copper Code Vanguard as another creature with the same name. A little bit out of desperation I play Takenuma here because I would love to find some of the sideboard cards. Something like Ritual of Soot or Glistening Deluge would have a really big impact here. The Fairy Dream Thief will get rid of this island for us. We <laughs> really don't need any more lands. We attack for three and pass the turn. the controls work in this game. Yeah, Brass and Borrower can come in again, the Thoughtseize can come out, but I figure we could still use some Ego Drain, because um, I think that's the only way of getting rid of a resolved uh, wedding announcement, for example. Like we could pity theft the wedding announcement and then ego drain it from the hand. Okay, we are trying to play a little bit more serious now, so a one land hand has to go. This hand is fine. Turn one, sleep cursed fair. And oh, turn one, portable hole. That's not going to do something. And I'm sorry, I forgot that you have to manually put the word ability onto the stack here. So half of the eye tyrant is still coming untapped. And I have to untap the Sleep Cursed Fairy, because I can't pity theft once Thalia is resolved. I fell for it again. Yes, planeswalkers are non-creature spells. Liliana of the Veil costs one more to cast.
can pity theft the other Salya here. I figure it's still the best play to let the opponent sacrifice the Thalia's lieutenant. If we would use Wrinkle for that here, we would have to sacrifice the Sleep Cursed Fairy. But I hope to draw another land so we can sacrifice the Motorbolt instead. And another Thalia, but uh, this time the Heretic Cathar. No, we can't even attack the Ferenko anymore. I'm not going to play the land here. We can discard that into Lilian of the Will. He just enters the battlefield tapped. Yeah, let's discard and then just to take the first deep cost ferry. he found Adeline. That's really a problem for us, because we can't make him sacrifice the creatures anymore. From now on they are just going to sacrifice the tokens. At least one of the tokens we can still get rid of with the pity theft here. I'm activating the motor bolt here, just as planned, to sacrifice it to Renko.
Another copper cord vanguard. With Adeline, they now have a great way to play around Drenkel's sacrifice ability. And this is where I realize a grave mistake. The opponent was at 14 life in the last turn. So if I would have chosen the draw and life loss ability from Rankle, I would be able to win the game now by choosing the ability again. But it is what it is. I'm trying to learn here. And the opponent goes down to two life. If they don't find anything, I could still have a slim chance to win by untapping the Sleep Cursed Fairy and blocking one of the humans with it. Nope, that's too much. I untap her last time and then that's game. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Yeah.